Today we have an ultra record player and it mod the model number when I found the right page in the service manual is 6042 so it's a mono single channel record player but these are fitted with a stereo cartridge switched for mono operation when it's used standalone like this or with the optional speaker amplifier when that's plugged in it switches to stereo and this becomes the right hand channel and the optional amplifier becomes the left hand channel I've not seen one of these before made by Thorne and Brad Badge Dolter of course in those days it's 1971-ish um, going to the service manual in those days Ferguson, HMV, Marconi and Ultra were all made by Thorne and basically had HMV as the upper brand and Marconi phone and Ultra as the lower brands and Ferguson somewhere in between. So it's quite versatile as you can see by the controls there. As you've got bass and treble, volume on and off, socket for stereo, amplifier as I mentioned earlier, tape socket and a radio input uh, just to go from the earphone socket of a transistor radio. So I'm just going to put it on its side and then you can see the amplifier. They're about, they are 5 watts RMS output these into a really nice speaker. So there we are, it's got a half decent speaker in it, it must be 8x5. Um, amplifier here with the AD162, AD161, a uh, complementary pair. And if I just tilt that, I'm sure you can just see, we've got those nasty black capacitors that Thorne Products had at the time. And we'll be doing those before we power it up. You'll see it's got a mains transformer, so unlike some of the cheaper record players, it doesn't rely on using an overwind on the motor for the turntable and if we tilt the camera down the bottom of the BSR turntable and it clearly says that it's an MA55 looking at the record deck which says MA55 going to the label underneath and if we lift that up you hopefully will see a BSR C1 stereo cartridge fitted so what we're going to do now is service this turntable. So what I tend to do with all these type of things, we just check the mains plug because you never know whether it's incorrectly wired or that it's got the wrong fuse in it. So we check the earth, check the live, check the neutral, cables in the cable grip, that's fine. And it has indeed got the wrong fuse. It's a 13 amp fuse, we'll replace that with a 3. So we'll get that done. So there we go with the 3 amp fuse, we can pop that back together. And that plug could do with some cleaning up as well, looks like it's got somebody's dinner down it. So there will be, I don't know what all this dust bug rubbish is. This will pop out and we'll get rid of the, get the circuit out underneath. and that's going to be fun because it's seized on there so what I'm going to do is apply some heat from the soldering iron to do that we've got to get the spindle out the spindles come straight out and we'll pop the soldering iron down that hole and that hopefully will release the gummed up grease so we'll come back to that in three minutes. Right, hopefully that's enough heat. So we'll pop the soldering iron back and hopefully that will now lift off and it does. It's a metal platter on this model, which is a bit nicer than the plastic one. And it's the usual arrangement on these BSR and the Garrard decks. Just zoom in a bit. Pop this idle wheel off. Get the circlip off all right. There's a fibre thrust washer there. Got to watch that. 
and there's also one on the underside. So make sure they're removed. The next thing, we'll get the kitchen roll and we'll get the isopropyl alcohol. So I've put some isopropyl alcohol on my piece of kitchen paper. Just clean that round. There's some mess come off that. We'll clean the idler. Might as well switch that soldering iron off. And whilst we're at it, we'll clean the inside of the platter. There we go. So that's got quite a bit of mess off. Uh, next thing we'll do is put a bit of lubrication on the spindle. And for that I just need to go and find my ordinary household thin oil. It's incredible, I've done this job 38 years and I've never had one of these in before. And it's an, quite an impressive piece of kit. So what I've done is apply oil to the piece of kitchen roll rather than get it all over the place and we'll just apply that to the the spindle there. The other thing I should have done is whilst we've got the isopropyl on the rag just clean the motor shaft. I see it's a four speed one so it's got four steps for 16, 33, 45 and 78. So we'll put the fibre thrust washer on the clean idler and that nicely goes round and the other fibre thrust washer and then the circlet back if I can do that by hand yes I've done that today depends what breakfast cereal I've had right so the next thing we need to do I'll just make sure that's in shot is we will just take the auto mechanism cam off and again these can be seized and a lot of people will say to me, "My, the pickup only goes so far into the record and then it, it jumps because it can't go any further. And that's because of the auto stop actuator there. This doesn't feel, like, oh it is, it is, it's stiff, it's as stiff as anything. Half of it is alright and the other half isn't. So that's what would be happening on this record player. And you'll notice I've removed that piece of Dymo label which said one record at a time only. So the previous owner has clearly had the snag that the auto changer wasn't working because it's all gummed up. Oh, I don't want it. This doesn't want to come off, does it? I'd hate to have to look for a circlet players. There we are. That's off now. So I've taken that one off. We'll take that one off. Kill several birds with one stone, as they say. And sometimes we have to apply heat to these to get them off. I think it's moving. Yeah, sometimes I end up putting the soldering iron on the centre there to heat it up. And you can see there that it's full of nasty, thick, toffee-like grease. So we're just going to get that off again. We're using the isopropyl alcohol and that bit of kitchen roll, which we've uh, already messed up nicely. That's absolutely awful. They don't actually recommend you put grease back on these, just a bit of light household oil. But other people might have other ideas, but that's what we were told when I did the training course at the time in the 70s. So that's got rid of, of that. Whilst the auto mechanism cams off I'll put some lubrication on the centre spindle there so we'll just take that washer off and that will reveal in fact I'll just clean that up as well because it's a bit toffee like and I'll use the aerosol one wherever I've put it again it's just the household oil Of 
put some down there because there's some works for the uh, auto mechanism. And that should be absolutely fine. There's a bit of stickiness there. And of course that spindle So while you weren't looking behind the scenes, some of this was so dirty that I decided to put it through the company dishwasher, including the knobs. So there's the um, auto thingy. I'm just going to apply some light oil to that and to the centre. I'll just run that around a bit. And sometimes these pop on quite easily and other times you have to play a little tricks. Now this one's gone together great. I think. No, this is one that we're going to have to play the piece of string. So what's happened here is that that's got to go in there and it doesn't want to. So what we end up having to do is to put a piece of string round there like that so we can pull it slightly. Now it's gone straight in hopefully. Yep. So that's the technique. So next I've made sure I've got oil between the two leaves of the auto stop actuator. That's now there. And we'll pop that circlet back on. Or am I losing my strength? don't say we're going to have to use the pliers on that one. There we go. Right, so there we are. I've in Behind the scenes I've checked the stylus. It looks like it's the BSR C1 cartridge and it's an ST13 stylus and it looks alright. I've looked under the stylus microscope and it's one of those double LP styli where you've got changeover from diamond on one side LP to Sapphire LP on the other, so it doesn't have 78, and that suits me down to the ground. So hopefully we can put the platter back on now. But we'll make sure it's running properly before... putting that circlet back on. Now the centre spindle what we tend to just do is to apply some oil to that and just rub it around and hopefully that will pop back in. Right. Now what we're going to do is to power it up, but by we're going to disconnect the amplifier because I haven't done the overhaul work and I don't want to power the amplifier up without having changed the capacitors. So what we'll just do is we'll disconnect the primary of the transformer. No, we won't. We'll disconnect the secondary of the transformer so the amplifier can't work. So there we are with the unit on its side. I've disconnected the amplifier from the secondary of the transformer. That's clearly the primary because it goes to the record player motor and to the mains. So now I'll be safe to switch it on and we'll test that record deck without any fear of the amplifier being damaged. Right now it's the moment of truth as you can see we've been cleaning that up just had the knobs back out of the dishwasher as well. So we'll make sure this works before we put the center circlet back in the and the trim piece. So here's a random record Remember, this isn't going through the amplifier. Um, it's previously been set for 12 inch, there's seven. Previously been on 33, so we'll put that to 45. And let's go for it. Well, that's a good start, isn't it? And the stylus is spot on in the right place. Good. So 
hopefully that will reject. And the jobs are good in this, they say. And just before we conclude the turntable side of this Ultra product, we'll just show you where the maker's model number is. It's a bit hidden. We'll take the camcorder into handheld mode. And if you look down there, it says 6042. So there you go. And thanks for watching this part of this overhaul.